What is up? It's the champ and in today's video I'm going to be helping beginners and new players to improve in Mordhau. For credibility purposes, I do have extensive experience coaching traditional sports, so I'm hoping this experience will transfer over to helping eSport players. I'll be breaking down this video into different steps where we will work on specific skills required to have success in Mordhau. I like to call this focused practice where we'll focus on improving at a few game mechanics at a time since it's easier to develop muscle memory for one or two things at a time than just going into games saying, hey, I want to get better at everything. Step one, our first step towards learning Mordhau should be pretty damn obvious, but I know from my friends alone, many people skip it, and that's to play the damn tutorial. Mordhau has one of the better in-game tutorials I've ever seen, and it's a great start for understanding the basic terminology. This is also a good time to change any keybinds that you feel uncomfortable with. Personally, I prefer to input each strike with the press of an individual button, so I don't use the 240 system. However, many players do utilize it and do extremely well with it. Step 2. Okay, so you mastered the tutorial and you're ready to put all the skills you learned to the test, right? This is a time where we're going to see how much information you've retained. Load up into the game and play a few rounds. Choose whichever class looks cool and see how you do. I'd recommend playing till level 4 or 5 just to get a sense for how the game feels. If you're like me, you probably retained little information from the tutorial and got slaughtered for the majority of your play session. I consider myself to be a pretty good gamer, but having never played a game like this before, I was seriously contemplating if I was retarded as I would continually miss sword swings at enemies who were facing the other direction and three feet away, only to have them turn around and kill me. At this step in my Mordhau experience, I was completely and totally trash. However, don't quit here. Hard work will pay off, and in the next step, we will start focusing our practice. Step 3. Now, before focusing on this step, I would encourage players to once again play through the tutorial to refresh your mind on the skills, terminology, and key binding. Remember, repetition builds muscle memory. Now, after being slaughtered in our past few games, it's time to simplify things for ourselves so we can build on one or two skills at a time and feel like we have a fighting chance in battle. The first thing we're going to do is choose a specific kit. And I know I'm going to take a huge flack for this um, specific kit that I chose. since It's hated on Reddit and for good reason. But we're going to run Shield and Short Spear or Shield and Repair. These kits tend to be very easy to pick up and play because with the shield, you do not have to time your blocks and the speed of the thrust also makes it much easier to hit targets. Now remember, we chose this kit for a reason, to focus on things to practice. During this step in our learning process, we are going to focus on staying alive by abusing the fact that our shield is much more forgiving for defense than a long sword and recognizing the opportunities to attack. Using the shield at this step in our learning is like having training wheels in a bicycle. As long as you have stamina, you can hold the shield in the direction of your attacker and repeatedly block attacks without having to worry about timing your parry. This can allow you to better see the speed and rhythm of your opponents as they attack you. Try to see how fast a halberd or a maul moves when it's coming at your shield. Try to see how far away the attack can hit your shield. When you start feeling like you are catching the timing of your enemies, try scrolling up on your mouse immediately after they attack you. See if you can begin landing thrusts after your opponent strikes. We're only focusing on thrusts right now so that we simplify, simplify the amount of keybinds we are hitting and can develop the habit of counterattacking our enemies. When you begin to feel comfortable with defense, th start throwing your stabs out first and get more offensive. Remember to get that shield up when you feel uncomfortable or your enemy does something that confuses you. Now as you begin to climb up the leaderboards, remember that this kit is not the end of our Mordhau development and to improve we really need to remove the training wheels in step 4. Now in step 4 we're going to break out the big boy weapons. Choose a two handed weapon that you find interesting. I'd recommend the great sword, long sword, or poleaxe as these are very well rounded weapons. During this step in our focus training, we're removing the crutch of the shield and focusing on defending ourselves with our weapon. While we are playing now, we want enemies to attack us first. Try and get used to timing and speed of their attacks. You might notice you're missing blocks early on, especially in situations where there are more than one enemy. This is perfectly normal and will happen less as you continue to practice. 
Now, as you begin getting comfortable with blocking, let's try to add some of those reposts that we learned about in the tutorial. Immediately after successfully attacking, throw an attack back at your opponent. A successful repost will be quicker than a normal attack and leave you immune to being flinched by enemies. As you continue to become more competent with blocking, begin varying your attacks and even, even begin to attack first. When you feel comfortable with your ability to block and repost, you're ready to move on to more advanced offensive maneuvers. Step 5. While continuing to use our two-handed weapons, we will work on varying up our offensive attacks. When we practice in this stage, we want to be more aggressive on our opponents and practice faking them out for free hits. The first technique we're going to use is morphing our strikes. To morph an attack, begin a thrust and immediately begin a slash right after. Your character will begin the thrust and then switch the attack to the slash. This often makes new players or panicked players attempt to block the thrust only to get hit by the slash. Try this out in your gameplay and once you get comfortable, begin to vary your attacks and fights. Maybe your first attack will be a morph thrust and on your second attack you will not morph the attack making your attacks unpredictable. As you begin to be comfortable with morphing your, your attacks, you will notice one weakness with beginning a fight with a morph. The counter to someone morphing is to throw an initial strike around when the first strike of the morph is thrown, and a lot of new players will just wildly swing at you regardless of if you have shown an attack, and their swing will actually land before the morph strike. So this is now where we're going to mix in feints. The cool thing with feints is there is a pretty long window you can cancel an attack after you start it. Hit your faint button immediately after initiating an attack, and you will notice that you just lift your shoulder up. Now, after initiating your attack, wait a little bit before fainting, and you will notice you are giving a better fake. Faints are really powerful because after you faint, if you notice your opponent did not stop their attack, you can just parry their attack. Practice initiating fights with a faint followed by another attack. See if you can begin to trick your opponents into blocking. A great combo attack is a faint right slash into a left slash morphed into a stab. When you feel confident mixing these forms of offense into your fighting game, you're ready to move on to the most difficult and final step of this guide. Step 6. For our final step in this guide, we're going to begin practicing what is probably the most difficult mechanic in the game, chambering. When chambering a strike, you perform the same strike right before you are struck, which then begins a very quick counterattack. Chambering is so difficult because it not only requires timing, but also predicting the correct strike and performing it. While chambering slashes and underhanded strikes can be difficult, we'll start with practicing on thrust. With so many rapier and shield users, uh, in the game, it is essential to master thrust chambering to be successful in front lines. To chamber a thrust, thrust at the enemy before his thrust lands. This will cause your attack to push his blade to the side and hit him with a stab. Against really bad thrust abusers with either a spear or rapier, this will be enough. However, most rapier, rapier players will just chamber you back, which can turn into an endless cycle of chamber roulette till someone runs out of stamina. However, to break this up, you can actually morph your chambers, which many times is enough to land a strike. Begin practicing in front lines by seeking out weapons such as spears or rapiers that abuse thrusts and try to chamber them. When you begin to understand the timing, try to strike back with a morph on your chambered attack. When you feel confident with this, you can begin to try to throw chambers on slashes when you notice your opponent throws the same strikes over and over again. Be careful, however, as chambering slashes is much more difficult than chambering thrusts. As we come to the conclusion of our guide on focusing our improvement, you should now be at the point where you have developed muscle memory for the core skills in Mordhau and should be finding much more success in front lines. Remember, the path to improvement never ends, and when you feel confident in these mechanics, seek out, seek out guidance on footwork, drags, and excels to further improve your game. I hope this guide was helpful, and please consider subscribing and liking the video. You can also watch me live on Twitch if you're interested in throwing out a follow on there. Strata the Champ out!